LDO or LDO Motors is known for making high quality stepper motors. I discovered them five or so years ago from others talking about their motors being used on Prusa's printers. Since then, LDO has greatly expanded, both in their motor offerings, but even more so in providing top tier kits for a wide range of projects. Some of these include Voron 3D printers, the FarmBot CNC Farmer, and the recently announced Milo Mill. Although they've manufactured a few PCBs for their kits, these have primarily been breakout boards and not full controllers. Until now. Last year, the Leviathan was announced, a feature-packed controller made from a collaboration between JNP, Voron Design, and LDO Motors. LDO kindly sent the Leviathan over to play around with. And while I decide which printer to swap it into, it felt like the perfect opportunity to take a first look at this board. In this video, we'll take a look at its specs and what makes it unique, to hopefully give you a better idea of whether it's the right choice for your build. So with all that being said and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Massive thanks to MicroSwiss for sponsoring today's video. MicroSwiss manufactures hot ends, extruders, and nozzles for over 30 different 3D printers and are constantly expanding. Their most recent NG Revo combines E3D's Rapid Change Revo technology with their popular NG extruder. I've been running their upgrades for over three years and have printed everything from PLA to carbon fiber nylon with them. I love that they are US based and all of their products are machined in house. This helps them to maintain the extremely high level of quality their customers have grown to expect. Another huge perk is that their upgrades are made for specific machines, making them drop in replacements in most instances. This expedites the upgrade process and allows you to get up and running again quickly. Links are in the description to find out more about the various upgrades they offer or to pick up your own. Diving right in, the Leviathan is no small board, with a footprint of 170 by 100 millimeters. The onboard MCU is an STM32 F446. This is an ARM Cortex M4, which is a 32-bit chip with a maximum clock frequency of 180 MHz. There are 5 TMC2209 and 2 TMC5160 drivers on board. Being that this was designed in collaboration with Voron, you have two 5160s for your AB motors, and the TMC2209s are enough for either 3 lead screws on the Trident or the 4 belted Z motors of the 2.4 with one to spare for your extruder. The 5160s can use 24 volts, but there is a separate high voltage input if you want to run them at 48 volts. All drivers have really nice built-in heat sinks for both the top and bottom sides of the board. Both the power input for the high voltage drivers, as well as the power input for the board, have polarity and over voltage protection. If you prefer to run CAN bus to your toolhead, the Leviathan is compatible with CAN bridge, so you don't need to have any sort of external transceiver. There is a 4-pin MicroFit 3.0 connector for your CAN high, CAN low, voltage, and ground. Next to the CAN bus port is our 24-volt in, along with our heater and bed power terminals. The heater has a max output capacity of 180 watts, or 7.5 amps, and the bed's max output is 240 watts, or 10 amps. There are large replaceable fuses for both of these. On the very corner of the left side of the board is the LED port. When looking over this board, I noticed that there is silk screening that contains the pinout for every single port directly on this board. I'm not sure that I've seen this before, and although I usually just go based off of the PDF, if you're ever troubleshooting, being able to see it right on the board is pretty nice. There are four fan ports and one Z probe, all with adjustable voltage. There's a jumper that can be switched between 5 volts and 24 volts for each of them. Right above them are two expansion ports. You can connect up to four thermistors, which means that you can do the hot end, bed, and both the top and bottom of the chamber. This can be really important if you're printing a lot with higher temp, more warp prone materials, especially if you are printing larger parts or even just batches of parts. Beside the thermistors, we have NeoPixel and filament runout. On the bottom right is our X, Y, and Z end stops. There's a 30 pin GPIO expansion port on the right side for even more expansion options. The large open area with the Leviathan logo has mounting holes for a full-size Pi 3 or 4, or a smaller Pi 0 2W. The board comes with standoffs along with a PCB hat for the Pi. This lets you use a connector near the MCU to power the Pi without the need for a buck converter or a separate 5V PSU. Aside from the specs of the board, one thing I value heavily is documentation. 
There is nothing more frustrating than struggling to figure out how to set up and flash a controller. Looking through the GitHub for Leviathan, there's a PDF with a fair bit of information, but I found the best guide to be in the LDO docs. This gives you wiring directions and a nice pinout of the board, including the expansion GPIOs. It also takes you through the process of flashing the Catapult bootloader and Clipper firmware. It's all labeled very nicely, but because the guide goes through USB, CAN bus, and UART, you'll want to be extra careful that you're following the correct section for your specific setup. The section on flashing CAN bus might be a little tricky for someone that hasn't gone through the process before, but they do have links over to the Catapult GitHub repo for anyone that needs additional documentation. When I do get this installed, if I feel like there are any gaps, I'll let LDO know to try to get this guide updated. In the Leviathan GitHub repository, there's a printable mounting bracket along with configs for both the Trident and 2.4. You can absolutely use this board for a number of other builds, but because it was made in collaboration with the Voron team, it only makes sense they would at least have the Trident and 2.4 configs available. So who do I think this controller is for? Well, I'd say anyone looking for a high quality board that it has enough inputs and outputs for. The specs on it make it a great option for a lot of Core XY printers, especially with those two 5160 drivers for the AB motors. Along with the 2.4 and Trident, I would say a Micron Plus, Salad Fork, and Mercury 1.1 are all great candidates for this board. It might actually be easier to say who this board is not for, and the one obvious one that comes to mind, at least for now, is any printer that's using all-wheel drive. For anyone not familiar with the all-wheel drive Core XY style 3D printer, it's very similar to a traditional Core XY printer, but instead of 1A and 1B motor, it has 2A and 2B motors. The reason that that will not work is because we've only got two 5160 drivers and unless there is going to be an expansion board made, which there very well could be, for right now there just isn't enough stepper drivers on this board. This is also a 24 volt board for Clipper firmware, so of course if your hardware is not compatible or you plan on running a different firmware, then this probably isn't the right option for you. I've been wanting to build a test bench 3D printer for some time now and seeing Hart K's Micron Plus rocking the Leviathan is really tempting. One thing that will be interesting to see is if on the next revision of the LDO 2.4 and Trident kit, if they end up swapping out the board they currently ship with, which I believe is the Octopus for the Leviathan board. And that has been a fairly detailed overview of the Leviathan board. I hope that I was able to answer the majority of the questions you maybe had on this. If you have any additional questions, let me know in the comments down below and I will do my best to answer. And as always, if I don't have the answer to those questions, I have no problem reaching out directly to LDO to try and get those answers for you. Also, let me know what your thoughts are on this board and if you plan to pick one up for a future build. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel further, I will have links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.